Alright you guys, so it's been a whole week since I've actually made a Minerva log, and there are a few reasons for that. Uh, most of this week has actually been low budget gaming and golf, because I play to some friends, and I've been uploading them twice a day every day for about 6 days now, which means I've flooded my channel with about 12 videos that have nothing to do with Minecraft, and I know that a lot of you guys really, really don't seem to appreciate that, but, you know, it is my channel, and I like to post whatever I'm doing at the time, and I'm sorry if that's not always Minecraft. However, I have thrown in some sneak peeks where I have been doing some Minecraft Redstone stuff, and I feel like we might want to get a little more into that. So I'm standing over here thinking, alright, Project Netherweb, day two, let's get this piston bolt done, let's get it out to the mesa and make this a little bit more of an approachable place in the world. And I'm like, alright, well I kind of want to build this as I go, and I'm going to need a lot of nether brick, which we don't really have. What the f- well... Happy Halloween, everybody. You're adventuring. And in the pursuit of nether brick, that led me to the furnace array. Obviously. Alright, well, let's cook up a lot of nether rack and get enough for my project. And then I realized, uh, well, two things. So, first off, the storage for this thing is still a disaster. Everything's get getting loaded into shulker boxes without any kind of organization. In fact, if I had in a spectator mode here, you'll probably see that a lot of these are just full of random items and definitely not nether brick so it's going to be a real pain filtering all of those items out not to mention the fact that SIG reminded me shortly after I said this in voice chat that the minecarts for the furnace array are still screwed up and I need to fix that and show him how to because he wants to learn how and all that uh, there is a tutorial that you can see up here or in the description below on exactly how to build this furnace array in its entirety uh, but apparently he still didn't quite understand the minecart thing and wanted my my guidance, because I've done this a lot of times before, and I could probably answer a few questions on the way. And Sig's a friend, and a fellow minor member, so I am happy to help him out. And a little bit of a side note, the uh, tree farm here uh, got rotated, so thank you, Matt. But I still need to go through and fix pretty much every single repeater delay and fill all the cauldrons with water, because I don't think he actually changed the delay of a single repeater in this entire design. I mean, mad props to him for setting all this up, but... We have already changed quite a few repeater delays, like down here, but um, this tree farm is far from functional. But it's going to be a little bit more working than, uh, than Nils's effort earlier. But back to the furnace array, uh, well, we had to figure out a little bit of redstone that led to about a seven and a half hour live stream, uh, five hours of which we were actually designing this thing right here. And uh, this was a massive effort, so let me just get into right in the meat and potatoes of this video, because if, I mean, I'm, I'm making this, I'm titling this after the video, but I'm pretty sure uh, the title or thumbnail had something to do with the contraption you see in front of me, because, in my opinion, this is the most interesting part of this. And this is sort of what's been eating a lot of my time. As I mentioned in the beginning here, I haven't been making as many Minecraft videos, because I've been taking a little break uh, from survival mode. You know, I've been playing with my friends, playing some games, making a lot of videos that I've been working hard on that aren't Minecraft, and I know that they don't do as well on my channel, but, you know, as a creator, I need to follow my creative freedom. Uh, enough of that, though. This design here is pretty cool. So, starting from scratch, let me explain our needs for the furnace array. This thing is built to scale. We need 52 hoppers to pick up all of the items exporting from the furnace array. It just unloads way too fast for any less to actually pick up all of the items, or else we're going to experience some loss in heavy workloads. Uh, the other thing is the items definitely need to be filtered. So I mentioned before that with our current system, multiple different items are getting into the shulker boxes and you end up needing to manually filter them out or run them through our storage room, which is really, really slow. Uh, storage room works great, but it, it's not really designed for these kinds of workloads. Uh, to, to filter an entire shulker box takes about 11 and a half minutes and we're filling 52 at a time here. You can see the problem. Uh, so they need to be filtered. Now, the only problem with filtering items is in conventional designs, in a conventional sense, to have an item filter like this, you set it once, you leave it, you never touch it again. That's great, but to filter the items that we need, we need 52 item filters plus 26 uh, times 2 shulker box loaders here, tutorial and link uh, to the showcase in the description below. And that means we're going to need 50 of these for each item type. And we theorize that we need about four to five typical items that we cook in our furnace array. On Minerva, we cook a lot of sand, a lot of chorus flower, or chorus fruit, purple, the, the purple crap, 
Uh, we cook a lot of nether brick uh, from the nether rack, and we also might cook a lot of charcoal. So that's four off the top of my head. And we were also thinking maybe stone in some cases. You know, you you need to be able to have a, a few item filters for the miscellaneous stuff because you never know uh, when someone's going to bring in I don't know fifty thousand pork chops or something. You, you just you need to you need to prepare for these things. And, uh, well, we tossed around a few ideas. I, I watched a video by, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna butcher this. It's either Pala Pala or, or Paya Paya, depending if he's Latino, or maybe he's like Pala Paya, I don't know. Uh, the video is probably playing up here if you guys are checking it out. I actually watched this in the live stream where we designed this, and um, he gave a little bit of inspiration to what we needed. Uh, most of his system, as he actually replied to me in the comments below, stated, are pretty much overkill for what we need in the furnace array, where all we really need are filters. We don't really need the, the timer or anything of special like that. So what we opted for is a way to swap out the filter item. Now let me get into exactly how we do that. Every single filter here filters down to two items. So if you can, or down to one item. So you can see as I put items in, it's going to filter them out and leave it down to one. Now I know that some of you are already going to the comments like, bro, 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 that's not, that's not safe. It's, it's, you're going to break it. It's no, I know, I know. In Minecraft, if you experience a lot of lag or the server screws up or somebody leaves the area while this is filtering, there's a pretty high chance that this filter item is going to glitch through, go through, and then you have a chance to lose some of your filter items. I understand that completely. Um, but also, in all of our testing, it's been completely fine. On Minerva, we, we shelled out for a dedicated server, so it runs amazingly well. Honestly, I think I'm going to take my chances. I mean, I can fix these filters by hand if it ever screws up. It's it's not a big deal. Uh, like I mentioned, all of these broken chalk boxes that will have filter items in them, I'll just run it through the sorting system. Uh, uh, we'll fix it but it shouldn't be a huge reoccurring issue. And because of that, we also decided to use pistons in the wiring. I know this is like a little crunch down in here and I don't think I have a mock-up. Oh, there we go, here's a mock-up. Uh, we actually use a cauldron facing down. This is a design from a video I made a long time ago with RID PMC. Uh, link to that in the description as well because we showed off, I think, three or four different designs for really, really good item filters that can filter down to as many items as you want. So you can see that I can filter, you know, one piston remaining or if you actually take out some redstone dust, you can probably filter down to, what would that be, four pistons? Yeah, so you can actually customize how many items you want here, and it's completely tileable. Uh, you can have as many of these in a row as you want. You can see I've got 26 here, 26 on the other side, and they're, they're actually pretty good. However, in Minecraft, you really, really don't want to have pistons in your wiring because, like I mentioned, if you unload it or if you have an extremely bad le server lag spike where it doesn't maybe not save all your data, uh, if some glitchiness occurs, the piston can forget its block, your entire filter will drain, and it'll just be a gigantic mess. When a filter drains out, um, every item that you send through the system will get stuck in this hopper. It's happened a number of times on my Nerva where our, our sugar filter has broken. And that's pretty much ruined everything that went through the witch hut wing. Uh, and it's a big mess, but we figured since we're already taking the risk with the one item filter, we might as well use pistons to crunch down on the wiring space here. All right, so that was a lot of explanation. Now, a lot of this I explained several times over the course of the live stream, but to spare you guys a few hours, I'm just kind of going through everything right now. So what we did initially was over here, where whenever we actually um, wanted to empty out the item, we would send a short pulse from an observer and then drain out the filter items. And uh, this whole system here would lock the hopper uh, so that you could get the hopper out of here. And let me actually demonstrate that right now. This is only gonna trigger half of it. So you trigger it. And then it gives a short pulse, and then it pushes these blocks back down. So what actually happened here is it drained out every single filter item. It only drained out one, and then it drained out the hopper below it. That way, with one flick of a switch, it completely drains out the filter items and just leaves it open. That means whenever you're ready to cook with the furnace array again, the items it spits out will actually program the hoppers in real time. It'll also program only as many hoppers as it needs, obviously, because if you're only outputting, like, if you're cooking sand and stone, you know, half the sand will fill half the hoppers, half the stone will fill half the stone. You know, it'll actually be a pretty cool system for that way. Now, I know that that's not perfectly how it works, given that we have about... 64 hoppers for output so it'll come in a wave and it might not be perfect but it should work pretty well and uh, you can actually filter these on the fly so initially we just had it drain out and that was really unsafe because if not every single hopper was if some hoppers were like this but some hoppers had items in it that's really really dangerous because the hoppers that didn't have items in it would get filtered out so I quickly came up with a system like this so every single time a hopper filters let me just demonstrate that right now It'll actually do the filter and push a, a block up. 
and uh, you can see this didn't affect anything around it. And the same thing will happen over here if we actually filter like just a few items to get the piston to push down. It should actually push uh, this this block up. Yep, no, it actually did. Never mind. Uh, for some reason, these aren't getting pushed down. Oh, because of the slabs. Okay, uh, Pablo went through here and screwed up my wiring. But this piston should have been put down. Anyway, uh, these blocks get pushed up into place, which actually complete the wiring. So this line of dust back here, this zigzaggy dust, is actually what gets triggered from the main uh, observer. And basically all this does is, if I can go back to my small scale here, all it does is push this piston down and power this filter for just a short amount of time, and that drains out one single item from this filter. Now I mentioned this wiring right here. Uh, when Pablo, a uh, fellow Minerva member, uh, I know I've been saying his name a lot. If you don't know him, he's just a Minerva member who's really good at redstone and he likes to compact and change stuff and that he is good at. Uh, he figured out, <laughs> this was a massive oversight by me in the stream. I thought that this wiring was needed to lock the hopper above to get the filter out. He figured out that all you need to do is send it a short pulse. It'll drain out the hopper below and the filter item. So... I guess I missed that one. He also removed the block necessity entirety, entirely and made it so that the pistons actually push an observer out of the way. And to reset it, it pushes the observer back down, giving it the short pulse uh, on hand. So it's actually a little bit more compact and a little bit less laggy because you don't need as much wiring. Not that that's much of a concern because this will only be triggered uh, manually, which is something he and I kind of discussed. So he thought it should be automatic, that it would swap out the filter item when it's sorting. And this video would get way too long if I was to explain why that's not a great idea, but I figured we should leave it to the humans to dictate when it's ready. Now I mentioned that it will only filter out, you, you can actually filter things out or swap the filter item while it's running. And that's because as it's sorting, if I can actually throw in a lot of pistons right now, it'll actually force this piston up until it's done sorting. And the exact same thing occurs over here. So if I can just filter a bunch of pistons here, it'll keep this piston extended. So it won't actually push it back down until it's finished filtering. That means in a live sense, oh, it's going to trigger the whole system. Don't worry, this is not, this is just a prototype. Uh, in a live sense, if you're actually cooking items on the fly, you got the furnace array running, you can actually flick this as many times as you want, and it'll only filter out the uh, hopper filters that don't have items in it. Um, and that's pretty cool. In this case, it screwed up because I said my wiring got messed up, but otherwise that would have never happened. And uh, basically all of this just loads down in here into a shulker box loader. Huge shout out to Acheron, and I really should have done research with who he worked on this with, but link to that video in the description below, it'll give full credit to everybody involved. Uh, this is the new standard shulker box loader I use, it's about a block shorter and a block smaller than our conventional design, and in my experience it's actually fairly reliable. Uh, they've been using it on their technical servers for quite some time and it's never actually broken for them, so I think it's a pretty cool design, I prefer to build it because it's a little bit easier, a little bit cheaper, a little bit simpler, and you actually get more storage for shulker boxes because it uses droppers instead of hoppers. Uh, and and that's a pretty cool thing. So yeah, that's the design we use and it just uh, brings it down here. And to filter out all the items, you can just come down here and click and that'll just replace every single shulker box. Now down here is not something I really want to get into because uh, this wasn't my design. I think Major, Pablo, and Timis worked on this mostly. Um, they came up with a system to filter out shulker boxes that are full. Uh, near, They are full not quite full but have a few items in it and empty and that makes it a lot more convenient for the person uh, using this to filter out all the items because when you're swapping the filter item you're going to have a shulker box full of items that are from whatever cooking session you just had and you want those to get kicked out so you don't have mixed shulker boxes remember that's the entire point of filtering the items in the first <laughs> in the first place and uh, I'm leaving that in and so we designed this entire system to just send a few of the items over to the player so they can filter out the items. This is just something I mocked up right here where you can just place a bunch of uh, shulker boxes like this leading into um, one single shulker box. This is a great manual way to just let hoppers do the work for you, but I think that they're going to come up with a better design, um, and I hope they do. This is just something I set up like as a fail-safe. This will work for sure. It'll take a little bit of manpower to filter out the empties, but it should consolidate fairly well. You can see a few of these are locked up here. So, all right. Now, why didn't you make a video on this? Well, that's a great question. You know I want to. Uh, I'm making it right now, kind of. 
But this is still a prototype. You can see we got some wiring on the left, some wiring on the right. This is all of Pablo's ideas. I tweaked a few of these things. I liked most of them, like the observers up here. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive, but for Minerva, that's not really a cost thing. If ever I make a proper tutorial on this, I'll get into all that. Uh, my design works. It does. Uh, it's just not as refined. So let's go to his area. He insisted I not set up a shulker box, but I'm like, bro, it's faster. So this is kind of what we've got. He recycled the pink wiring and kind of did the whole thing with his way. And like I said, <clears throat> like I said, I like this. This is the more refined shulker box on loader here. Like I said, not my wiring. I don't know everything. So I'll talk to the guys involved in building that. And maybe we can make a separate video on that alone because this whole system here is about as tricky and complicated as this. Yeah, this is bigger, but there are a few simple components going on right here. You've got filters with one item, a way to drain them, a way to filter the items, and then just kind of an output. And that's really it. So I mentioned that Pablo figured out that we don't need that wiring in the middle, which means this whole space is much, much more open. But as is courtesy when working on somebody else's design, I copied it over here to make no changes to the original prototype of my hybrid anyway <laughs> and it's just over here so I, we can work on it and this is what we can that's not what we came up with we live streamed this as well I'll link that in the description I'll link everything I mentioned in the description don't you worry guys um, this is a pretty cool system so uh, we, this is mostly the same I'll save you guys the headache uh, almost everything here is exactly the same minus the terrible color choice here this is really hard to look at um, what we actually did is to drain the shulker boxes we made it tileable so, as I mentioned before, we would just click a button and break all of them. Well, not everyone would be ready, and if you're changing them on the fly, it's going to break every shulker box, which means you're going to have a bunch of half-fulls. That's just bad. That's just really bad. So, now what we do, if I can actually come up to a filter here. Uh, I mentioned this is not what we discussed, because Pablo likes to complicate stuff more than he should. This was working totally fine, and then he, he wired up a bunch of stuff. But, as this filters, it should push this piston down okay so what this is supposed to do is it pushes these blocks down it has the observers kind of just chilling down here and it stays extended as to lock it now this is supposed to uh, this is supposed to trigger it automatically which I don't want it to do uh, what you can do then is when you want to reset the entire system you actually update this here and it actually pushes all these observers and uh, filters out every single shulker box. Now, this is tileable. I just triggered all of them right there. This will only push up the observers that um, were pushed down, and only the observers that were pushed down were uh, were with filters where the items got filtered. Now, my explanation is getting a little choppy here because this is like brand new stuff. We designed this. I logged out, played PUBG for a few hours, and then I haven't really revisited it until now. Um, this is still a prototype, though. So once again, with the delayed video stuff. I'm going to get a video on this when this is done. In fact, I actually plan to like finish this today. Pablo insisted that we have some kind of fader here to like reset the thing automatically. I really don't want that because as you're using the furnace array, you don't want the system to automatically reset stuff. Example, he had it so that after a certain amount of time when the filter hasn't filtered an item in a while, it would reset itself automatically. Well, in a real world situation, say you're cooking a ton of sand, you go to eat a meal, 15 minutes of nothing cooking goes by because you finished your workload. You come back and you want to continue cooking sand. So you run off and grab more sand and come back. Now he added this lever here to force that off, but I, I fight against the, the automation there because sometimes you might just want to leave the filter item in. Maybe you're done cooking sand for now, but you know you're going to need it in a few days, so you just leave it be. Well, in that case, if a person comes by and they want to cook something other than sand, then they can just uh, flick a button that he has hidden here, and they can just empty out the items themselves. And I don't know why these are missing a filter item. I, I really got to talk to them and see if, these are, if this is intentional. But to summarize, this system does pretty much the same thing we did before, and uh, it's just a little bit easier and a lot nicer. Now I mentioned this is what we had before. You should check out the live stream. Maybe I'll post a screenshot on screen if I can find it. But this looked really cool without all the wiring and all the gradient crap we put in. I, They tried to make it look good. I, I really like the pink and white to be completely honest. But it pushes the observer down and it looks really cool and it functions very well. And uh, yeah, I am just really happy with this whole system because while it still has some kinks to work out, I think this is, I mean, we got some kinks to work out, but we already have working prototypes that do exactly what we need them to do. And this is exciting for me. So, 
yeah, if anybody has any um, anything to add in the comments below as to like, you know, a better way to deal with the shulker boxes or a consolidation system, meaning like it drains the, like say you've got a shulker box half full of sand and another one half full of sand, a system that places one of those and then drains all the items from the first one into the shulker box, breaks the empty, and then you've got one full shulker box of sand instead of two half fulls that kind of thing to do it automatically. I'm pretty sure we can figure that out, but if you want to help out, either leave your suggestions in the comments below, or, huge plug here, check out the Minerva Discord. We're all on there. Every Minerva member, I'm on there. Lots of fans from my channel, lots of people just hanging out. Uh, lots of people who are good at Redstone and don't even play on Minerva. Like, it would be a really great, healthy place for you guys to come on here and share your ideas. So, that's kind of it. Now you can see that this video, this clip alone I'm looking right now is 17 and a half minutes. So you can see why this is just such a, not a complicated thing, but there's so many angles to it that it's really taken a lot of my attention. And like I mentioned, a five hour live stream. It was seven and a half hours, but the first five hours was Minecraft. The rest we just played golf as a team. And uh, super good project. I'm super happy with it. Uh, I'm going to probably tinker with this off camera, but I only have one more thing to mention before we uh, close out this video. Who didn't expect a plug to the patron server? Who's actually all online right now? I think Doctorius is running around doing... Holy crap. <laughs> wow, these guys are moving fast. Okay, so, wow, these guys... This is just a perfect way to show off that this is looking really cool. I don't think he's online, but Dawes or Dawes or Dos, I, I, I never, I just can't. He's actually a guy who... I think he applied to be a builder for Minerva. I, I, mean, I talked to him, he's... Really good. I think he designed all of this. He's been sending some screenshots in the technical or the decorative Minecraft chat on the Minerva Discord. And um, wow, well, you can see that these guys are moving fast. Uh, Part in the game mode one, I'm not interacting with the world. I'm just moving through the another portal faster. They did this to spawn. Oh man, the last time I checked this was like it was just a bunch of um, tree farms and stuff. But now they've got a working iron farm. And uh, guys, this thing has been up for 10 days. It is October 10th as of recording this video. Well, obviously, if you guys want to be a part of this community, you can uh, hit me up on Discord because the easiest way is to become a $5 per month patron. Now, that updates the whitelist once per month. So if you just become a patron, you're going to have to wait until November 1st. However, as long as I can handle this on a small scale, now I understand that as the channel grows, as this community grows, I'm not going to be able to do this for you guys. But as of recording this video, if you get in touch with me, I will be able to like get you on early. However, you will need to become a patron, register for $5 or more a month. If you want to be on the pa on the Anarchy server, then that'll be $10. Um, and then you're going to have to also send me $5 on PayPal as if you were already a patron. But that will only cover October. So if you want to get in on it, but get in on it a little late, I can work that out for you guys. Otherwise, if you become a patron, you'll be whitelisted on November 1st when all the payments go through. That's just to make sure that everything's safe and secure. And uh, there are a few spectator accounts because uh, some guys, every patron is allowed to have one extra alternate account that can stay in game mode 3. And that can just be for camera work if they want to make videos or it can chunk load an area as a bot account and do whatever they want. Uh, hey, Iron. So, um, that's just kind of a huge plug. These guys have been super active. I hear the community is really good. The speaking place has been pretty active. These guys have been going crazy in the patron chat. So, if you guys are interested or you have friends who might be interested or you're already on the patron server and you want to plug it in the comments or something, uh, let everybody know. This is a pretty cool place to hang out. And with that, that concludes all of the updates that's been going on with me. So, I've been preferring these style of my Nervalog videos because I've been really, really enjoying streaming. It's just been a lot more fun for me to just hang out with my friends, uh, stream stuff, and just kind of not worry about it. It's a really chill session, and to me, it's like, it's how Minecraft is sort of meant to be played, where you just hang out with your friends, you play some Minecraft, and then at the end of the night, you get off and you do something else. Whereas, when I make videos, I need to, like, be worrying about updates along the way, I need to, like, fix stuff as I'm going, or whatever, whatever, and then, um... And then at the end, if I haven't finished my project within the day, it can be a little stressful, blah, blah, blah. It's just a lot more fluid for me to, like, make a stream on it. And it seems like plenty of you guys are completely happy with me doing uh, somewhat regular updates as to what we actually did in those streams. Because it's totally understandable that not all of you guys watch every single stream. I get it. But uh, as far as uh, what's going on in Minerva, we are doing a lot of things. In fact, let me just fly over while I'm talking here to the crayon box where we have set up a couple more crayons. Was that lag? Oh, my God. So here it is. We haven't done uh, too much. I have built like three more crayons since I last showed it in a video. And uh, 
Ertiga has been going through here and uh, putting in all the decorations. Ertiga is the guy who kind of spearheaded this project. He's the one who set up the cram box, and it looks fantastic. And on that note, I am going to end this. So thank you guys to all of you who might have sat through this entire thing. I know that we spent like 15 or more minutes on it just explaining the components of the uh, the furnace array, but it is kind of a complicated little thing. It, like, why would you need to swap your filter items? It takes a little bit of explanation. And then I tried to give you guys a little more uh, specifics on exactly what went into that. If you've gotten to the end of this video and you're still interested in actually checking that out, like I said, a live stream covers it from start to finish. That entire design, like I went through the troubleshooting process. I actually paused the stream a bit while I watched a video to do a little bit of research and then um, and then you guys obviously saw sort of the final prototype. I still need to do some tweaking before we're actually ready to build it in survival uh, but that dictates on what the builders have in mind for the furnace array. Plenty of updates as far as the decorative side of Minerva but uh, this has been more of a technical video and that's it for me. Thank you guys for watching and uh, have a nice day.